guys. Welcome to the eighth episode of Fantastic Talks. And let me thank, start by thanking all of you for the incredible support that you have given to the talks. And it makes my, you know, these alternate Tuesdays that we do these talks uh, fun also. And I love to interact with all of you. It's so good to see so many of you coming back regularly. I hope all of you have started your investment journeys and are making wealth and are enjoying the prosperity of this country. You know, stock markets are amazing. They give you an opportunity to make the world, the best of the people work for you. You know, earlier the money was only held in very few hands. Now you can be a part of that gain by buying stock in that company that you believe is going to be the winner. And as they grow the company, your stock and your money grows. Yes, there will always be ups and downs. But if you hold a stock long enough and the company is good enough, you will always create wealth. So this is at a time where we can say this is a time of hope. You know, the, there are different definitions to hope. But this is a time where we are seeing the COVID wave subside now. And uh, there is, looks to be a end uh, light at the end of the tunnel. So numbers, I know still some parts of that country are suffering really, really badly. And it's moving from one side to another side. But at least the numbers overall are down. And we are hoping that by the middle or the end of the June, this second wave would have come to an end. And hopefully the vaccination drive will catch up. And we don't have to see this wave again. Also to our friends in the West who saw a terrible uh, uh, you know, hurricane. And now our friends in the East who have recently gone through it. So that shows the fragility of life. That how this global warming and other things are changing the weather. And how it is very important for each and every one of us to have insurance. You know, this is a point I keep making. Insurance me is a very, very small investment. Like, uh, you know, insuring a house for maybe a 10 lakh rupee costs 1,000 rupees. Uh, you know, if you take a fire, earthquake, damage, insurance, at, at max I'm talking about. So point is, but yes, but if something happens, there's a cyclone, there's an earthquake, there's a calamity, something goes down. Otherwise, you would have lost 10 lakh rupees, of, you know, which you could have been insured for 1,000 rupees. Same is with our health. You know, today I see a lot of people out there with a 3 lakh rupee, 5 lakh health cover. We recently did a, you know, survey for the people that what is an adequate health cover. And to my surprise, most of people said 3 to 5 lakhs for a family. Guys, that is not enough. You know, that's where education needs to come up. That cover required is 25 to 50 lakh rupees today. And we people have seen it in Corona where, you know, one patient treatment, if he got really critical, has gone to 20, 30 lakhs. And this has brought financial ruin to the families because they didn't have adequate insurance. And even in insurance, like they didn't, if they bought the insurance, they have not bought it through a proper good broker. Health insurance is something you cannot play around with, especially mm -hmm. retail health insurance. You have to buy it through a professional broker. Like, you know, I'm not marketing Bajaj Capital, but you have to buy it like Bajaj Capital. That's the reason we are the largest individual health insurance broker, because we help you understand terms and conditions. Because there are thousands of plans available. There are thousands of alternatives. And each, each plan is a contract which covers different things. And you need to know what are the things that you perceive the risk. And you need to take a cover of that. And you need a very knowledgeable partner for that. And you need someone who's going to fight for claim just in case. See, 95% of the claims go through on their own. But that 5% of the claims, if they get stuck, you don't want to waste your time fighting. So you know, need somebody to fight. So please be very, very careful on buying your health insurance. The distributors, people like us, make very little money. But this is very important. And the you know, also, I recently done a LinkedIn post. If you have it, if you follow me on LinkedIn. You can search up Sajib Bajaj, you know, where I had shown that between a 5 lakh cover, which costs about 14, 15,000 to a 40 lakh cover, take care, the difference in cost is maybe four, 5,000. People perceive it is five times more expensive. To take it to a 1 crore cover, it's probably 20,000 rupees. So the incremental cost of increasing your cover from 5 lakh to maybe even 50 lakhs is a very small amount. And most of us people don't know it because they remember health insurance in the old times that used to happen at the time of PSU insurers. Guys, that has changed. And even the PSU retirees who are there on the call, 
your group insurance coverages are not enough. They are giving a 2% or 1% room rate cap. And it's a 2 lakh policy. That means you can't have a room for more than 4,000. Otherwise, you'll get proportionate amount. So you need to buy a super top up. So guys, please be very, very careful. Please take this time to review your this thing. We at Bajaj Capital have started a free service for called health insurance review, where we are trying to help people review their health insurances. It's absolutely free. There is no obligation to buy from us. Send us your health insurance detail to detail to care at bajajcapital.com and we'll respond on it. And it's a free service, but do take advantage and give us some time. Being a free service, we are receiving thousands of requests. So it will take us some time. So probably your request can take anything between one to three weeks. So please be patient. We will review it and we will give you the right advice that what is the right uh, plan for you. So coming to today's topic, I'm very excited to have me near Eric. You know, who's, uh, he's, he's the one person who acquired his father's uh, legacy and he's taken it to much beyond. PPFS, FAS mutual fund is something I really admire. So they, are, they actually created the multi-cap, multi-cap, uh, uh, you know, uh, category virtually by being one of the best performing funds. So without further ado, let me bring in Neil to take our talk today forward. Thank you, Sanjeev. Uh, thank you for calling me here, and I'm very happy to be here with you. Thank you, Neil. Sorry, today I was talking from my heart, so I just had to get this point across. You know, the other day I was doing a TV program where they were just saying insurance is bad, realizing the kind of money these insurance companies have paid. You know, hats off to these guys, and they are still getting the blame. But uh, <laughs> a lot of people have ended up buying a wrong policy, so I just had to make my point. Uh, yeah. You're absolutely right about the health insurance part of it. You know, I mean, I think everyone needs health cover. That's uh, I, well, you couldn't say that enough. So I totally uh, agree with you on that. What happens is that see, people now buy. I think health insurance is not expensive in India. So it's a twenty thousand, fifty thousand. Mm. So you really don't bother about it. You say, "Acha, kisi yeah. se bhi le." Now yeah. this is your most critical product. You need a very, very qualified person who's going to be willing you, willing to sell you this small product. But this is a product which will, uh, you know, define this thing. So coming to insurance, uh, I'm going to start with a very tough question. I know it was a very tough period of your life. You know, we have read the story that how your father used to be a great fan of Buffet and was going to US uh, to meet Warren Buffet when he had his uh, heart attack. And uh, then you, this whole response came your shoulders so can you tell us a little about that and how you came into this and you know we heard Neil was always a sportsman so from a sportsman to a finance man how did that journey happen <laughs> uh, yeah okay uh, so uh, first of all uh, so uh, it was very unfortunate actually it, it was a life defining uh, moment in my life uh, mom and dad both had gone to the US uh, for Warren Buffett's uh, uh, annual general meeting, um, and uh, uh, they had a car accident. So it wasn't a heart attack. Uh, uh, they had oh. a car accident there. Um, uh, also, my uh, in the car was my CIO and head of research. So uh, uh, I think uh, it was kind of all the senior people in the office plus uh, both my parents. Uh, and uh, uh, so it happened on a Sunday morning. Uh, so it was uh, Sunday evening around here. So I heard that they got into an accident around 7 p.m. Uh, Indian time. Again, your mind doesn't, uh, mind would be like, okay, uh, might be a small accident, uh, they'll get over it. And anyway, that time somebody told me that, yeah, it's fine, they'll get, uh, it, this should be fine. So I didn't uh, really uh, think about it much at that point. But as time went by, uh, it started getting real. Uh, and uh, the th the moment I stopped getting too many answers was time where I started uh, obviously getting worried at that point. Uh, uh, we didn't uh, come to know till about two or three in the morning uh, that dad had passed away. Uh, that's the time we uh, came to know about that. Uh, Mom was in serious condition in ICU in Omaha. Uh, didn't know if she was going to make it or not. Uh, uh, so uh, yeah, I mean, at uh, that time, a uh, lot of emotions obviously were there, a uh, lot of grief, but at the same time, uh, there was an organization to take care of also here. Uh, 
so at three in the morning we had to make calls had to make calls to uh uh directors trustees uh key people uh uh to uh, make sure that uh you know what uh, there might be a run on the mutual fund tomorrow morning uh, people will come maybe with big redemptions we need to be ready we have that much cash positions uh, uh, to give people back their money if that happens uh, and that was a real very real uh, feeling that uh, it could go to zero uh, uh, and uh, but uh, one more thing is that i think when uh, uh, i want to tell you that uh, when people are faced with uh, trauma or uh, uh, the uh, backs up to the wall as i say it you know i think uh, people don't realize how much strength they've also got at the same time so uh, i didn't realize that I, i had so much strength actually at that time and i think back at it i think uh, uh, i had to be strong for the organization i had to be strong for our unit holders i had to be strong for uh, shareholders so 9 in the morning we had to have a board meeting uh, i had to tell uh, uh, my uh, 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 people at the office what was happening obviously news was already by that then uh, was already there in the news uh, you, uh, investors called us and mind you that time we were a 450 500 crore uh, 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 aum uh, uh, mutual fund you know so uh, it could actually go to zero you know if uh, two or three big people uh, withdraw their money uh, you could see uh, it happening so i think it was all about instilling the trust i think my dad always believed and he always used to talk to me that i really want the organization to outlive me uh and i and that that, that thing stayed with me i'm like uh, this is a time to actually grow his legacy this is his legacy uh and uh, this is the way i want to uh, go about it and be strong for people you know i think uh, i think one of the things is managing emotions i learned really well about managing emotions that time uh i had the creep but i thought that we had a responsibility for people who were investing their hard earned money for the, uh, with us and uh they, they they had all the right to know what was happening how am i going to do it uh what should they do with their money uh should they even trust me uh, all those questions you know and i had to face it uh like a man so uh, i think that was one big thing that how to uh, really manage emotions uh again uh, making quick decisions or uh, decisions on the spot you know i think uh, uh, i was just thrust into the spot uh, overnight kind of a thing so uh, obviously it was uh, Uh, a, a huge learning curve i'm still learning i mean there's no doubt about that but at that point again uh, taking the right decision and and i was so glad that my dad used to talk to me a lot about the values the philosophy how company organization should be run so i think that was always there uh, with me you know uh, so um, uh, again making those decisions uh, was crucial at that point uh, and uh, the mo- i think one of the most important thing is also uh, uh, taking the noise out you know noise uh, there was a lot of noise at that point uh, distancing yourself from negativity uh, negative people uh, again when you're on a vulnerable stage uh, uh, a state uh, there are people who genuinely want the best for you and there are people who will want to also take advantage of you i think at that point uh, uh, distinguishing the two really made a big advantage going forward uh, uh having the right people around you was very necessary for me uh, my team at ppfs really helped me out and cannot uh, uh, talk more uh, cannot talk enough about how uh, teamwork is so important trust between the team is so important and uh, helping each other is so important so a uh, few of the things that i learned uh, also uh, about the sportsman part i was interested in sports management i was not a sportsman but i was really interested so uh, uh the thing was that i already I, i we grew up in a finance i grew up in a finance world in the sense that uh, the uh, though the mutual fund is about 8 years old uh, the company is 40 years old you know that started about 40 42 years back so uh, it was very old and uh, that time there was no tv and uh, other uh, smartphones and stuff so people would only be talking right i mean family would be talking and like a sponge i would be uh, getting that all inside my body and i was always good with money mind you i was actually really good with money growing up i really like saving and i wanted to invest and i would sell my old toys in my school and stuff like that so i was already uh, a bit entrepreneur in that way uh, but in the 20s you obviously uh, lose uh, uh, you're confused uh, like a lot of people i was confused uh, what do i want to do uh, i want to try new things so i did try new things and also did a little bit of masti yeah so uh, <laughs> with all those uh, in the end uh, i think my dad had uh, uh, kind of he kind of knew that i was always going to come back here but i need to find my own way back to finance and uh, 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 i i went for my mba and then uh, uh, and at that point i kind of realized that 
this is probably what I'd want to do. And uh, that's how it was. That's superb. Sometimes uh, have the plans. So you know, I know it must be have time for you, Neil, but you came up and just uh, you, you when you took over, it was about 400 to 500 mutual fund people who are listening to us. I remember. So what is your number? Where has the PPFAS uh, reached? Uh, yeah, it's a little above 11,000 crores uh, as of yeah, today. So it's a, you know, from a 500 crores to, and which year was this? Uh, how long has uh, it been? Uh, 2015 uh, was the incident that happened and uh, in six years around. Yeah, so it's in six years. I think it's an amazing growth, Neil. And uh, yeah, the, and the surprising part is that uh, you know you have a amazing fan following uh, for your mutual and uh, spe especially your multi-asset product. And at the same time, a lot of people who don't know about you at all, and they are, they are regular investors in the market. So what do you uh, say about this situation? Where in one you know one part of the audience loves uh, PPFAS, and there are a lot of people still you come across. Who don't even know that there is a PPFAS mutual fund and your product is so well. Yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, I, uh, let me uh, start by when we started the mutual fund. Uh, what was the thought process at that point and how we've come here? You know, I think that would give a bit of a clue about it. You know, uh, so well uh, before the mutual fund, you were a PMS and you're also third party uh, distributors. So at that point, mutual funds would uh, come to us also and. Uh, uh, they would want us to uh, sell the products. Uh, again, at that point, what we saw was when the relationship manager came to us, he came with 40, 50 schemes where he could not really explain what are the differences between this scheme and that scheme and so much overlap in stocks. And uh, there was no clarity as such as we as professionals were finding it tough. We thought that uh, a lay person would find this really tough. So uh, uh, we, 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 we said that when we come up with a product or when we come up with our mutual fund, it's going to be a very simple product. It's going to, uh, uh, it came up with a, uh, we came up with a, a plan of a uh, Swiss Army knife. A Swiss Army knife has, is one device, but multi-functionality. Uh, I think uh, that's what we uh, base the fund on is the Swiss Army knife that how do we have one fund and we can take advantage of all the opportunities that are there in the market. Uh, and that's how the uh, uh, now the flexi cap fund has been formed where we can invest in US markets, Indian markets, we can take cash calls, uh, uh, again, uh, small cap, mid cap, large cap, uh, mega caps in the uh, uh, in, in abroad. So that's how it came. And we said that we have a very simple product, we're not going to chase assets, we're going to uh, create goodwill, and we're going to build trust. And this is going to be a long process. It's going to be a six, seven year process, at least uh, if things go actually well for us. Uh, in the seventh year, we might see some growth, but we don't know. But think of it as a 10 year plan where you're not going to see too much stuff going on. Simple fact is that we didn't have a brand name. Like you said, even today, it's not extremely well known. I mean, there's still a lot left for visibility for PPFS. Uh, we, we didn't have a foreign partner or a big institution backing up, uh, backing us or any of those things. We didn't have a big uh, distribution reach or any of those things, you know, so it had to uh, be a scratch and crawl and uh, uh, keep everything uh, uh, in very focused, uh, be very focused. Also do things differently, not for the sake of doing differently, because we thought that what would we like uh, in a mutual fund? And one thing was that uh, uh, at that time, the, the, the financial crisis had just happened uh, in 2008-9, right? And US markets were down and out. And we thought this was the amazing, amazing time to get into the markets in the US. Uh, uh, so we started investing in 2010-11. I mean, right now it's getting a bit popularized, but uh, we started that more than a decade back. We thought that it was first first Indian mutual fund to have a flexi cap. Uh, you know, they were people already investing in uh, foreign uh, U.S. stocks here at, at that time. Uh, yeah, so uh, it wasn't popular. Number one, uh, we were definitely the first one to come with this 65-35. Uh, uh, kind of allocation in one fund where we get the Indian taxation also. Uh, there were a few, a uh, couple of uh, international funds, but uh, nothing to write about. They uh, weren't really marketing it or nobody was investing in it. Yeah. So we thought this was a really great time to get into uh, 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 stocks abroad. And also the fact that uh, communication, we thought that that was going to be the big difference maker uh, going forward uh, in the industry. I thought 
communication was not that great from mutual funds at that point uh we uh started this thing called the agm for our unit holders and for our partners where anyone and everyone who is invested with us can ask us any questions at the agm we have it uh, we have it every year and uh, it lasts for 4 to 5 right. hours and people can ask anything and it doesn't matter if you invested 1000 crores 1000 uh, rupees with me or 100 crores everyone is invited and everyone can ask you know so i think that transparency really helped us build the trust and uh, obviously performance we also get on sorry foreign buffet yeah 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 it was it was modeled after that exactly exactly uh, we took inspiration from that uh, agm of uh, warren buffett to kind of have something similar here uh, and uh, again the for us it was all about uh, keeping uh, the cost in control so like you said the visibility part didn't happen for a few years because we couldn't really market the we didn't really spend on marketing advertising not like we spend much right now also on marketing and advertising compared to others but yeah we didn't have that kind of uh, 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 resources to uh, really market it we thought that let the performance speak for itself let our communication speak for ourselves uh, uh, and uh, hopefully uh, in 6 or 7 years things can uh, get better for us and i think uh, over the last 2 years we've seen that things have got pretty good for us you know that's superb so there is a question that has come that uh, you know what have been your one to five year return and uh, let me ask you uh, uh, neil that how has uh, you know you guys have really always been there in the top quartile of the fund performance how have you been how have you achieved that yeah uh so uh one thing whatever okay. happened in the past uh, may i might not happen in the future so one caveat uh, that uh, uh, again i, I think uh, one thing is that uh, don't look too much at past returns uh, look at uh, 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 look at the fund houses uh, philosophy or uh, how they've been managing the fund a long term track record don't look at one year returns for sure uh, one uh, I, i think uh, what we were able to do uh is that uh, first of all the international stocks obviously played a part i mean that's uh, a given like maybe started pretty early so that obviously helped us uh, get some returns there but i think more uh, uh, than that what helped us was to uh, uh, not get carried away by uh, fa uh, fads and fancies so uh, i remember in 2017 well, i think that was a big year for us in the sense that uh, markets were going obviously it was going up one way small cap mid cap so going up uh, and uh, the frenzy was there at that point and uh, we thought that something was uh, we we were not very comfortable with the valuation uh, and uh, we uh, started building cash position not for the sake of building cash or just because we couldn't find a uh, better opportunity so we are like okay if you're not finding better opportunities better to just stay a bit in cash and when opportunities come we will uh, uh, we will invest and we didn't mind uh being uh, uh underperformers at that point so at that point we had seen a performance we were last in every category so uh, uh uh that keeps changing i guess uh, a little bit uh but uh, i think uh, we were as high as 30 or 32% cash and in 2017 uh, and then ilfs and all these things happened and the market came down and by the time uh, last march happened uh, uh the covid time the market really fell we actually had a good 20% cash to deploy and uh, we could deploy that at great valuation so i think uh, deploying money at good valuation pr protecting the downside was very a key ingredient uh, for us more than also the international investing i think not losing money in the market is more important uh, than anything that's about 70 80% of the work done if you can protect the downside and uh, protect the uh, portfolio from permanent uh, loss of capital short term underperformance is going to happen that's a guarantee but uh, 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 short term underperform for long term uh, over performance is something that we were looking at and protecting the downside was a key in doing that yeah so neil i i fully agree that you know past performance is not an indicator of the future performance and that's where a lot of people lose money they look at you know, okay this fund has performed very well for the last one year two years and they put money in that but they don't realize that you know everything has a trend and that trend maybe is over so when you end up putting your money behind something that has already worked then it's then it's over you have to put your money into something that is likely to work over the next uh, 12 to 24 to 36 months or and in or the other thing is that okay choose a good fund and stay put for the next yeah. 10 years or 15 years 
and and let the fund manager find the next uh, uh, right place to be in but just uh, for people to understand just what has been the performance of the multi cap fund for last one year what were your returns uh, uh, one year I, yeah. i don't know why i'm calling it multi cap but flexi cap yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh so if i am not mistaken it, it was about uh, 68 60 uh, year to date i mean uh, from last year the same date to now it will be about 68 69% uh, uh returns uh, in the five year return yeah five year uh, and since inception has been more than 20% cagr so that's actually very heartening that the long term performance has been pretty good so uh, uh yeah so pretty happy about the like, I'm also pretty happy. You're the best performing mutual fund in my portfolio. So thank you. So, <laughs> so I think uh, that's been uh, fantastic, and it's uh, you know I'm always amazed at your flexibility. Like uh, you know, and the um, the amazing thing you have done for your dad's legacy. Every investor who invests in your uh, company gets that uh, you know your mandate, culture, the value yeah. investing philosophy. but i have always seen you guys move between value and growth so you know and and one of the learnings i take from you and maybe your father or you is that uh, that you know although your father was a you know follower of warren but i think mm. he went beyond the person he was inspired by and uh, and your international investments were growth investments like you invested in apple even before warren bought <laughs> into the digital trend so point is that uh, you know what is your philosophy value growth and what do you feel about today where is it what is the where have to, where should you be at this time yeah so uh, one thing is i don't think we want to be really uh, boxed into any category but uh, obviously we call ourselves value investor so any company that we invest in we think it's it's a value buy i think uh, one thing is that we are very focused on the price we pay for the business uh, uh again uh we do like to see obviously growth is very important uh growth uh, i mean uh, value without growth is uh, no fun right i mean you're not going to uh, get anywhere uh so uh, uh it's it's also the fact that uh, that the uh, I, i i i get it i get what you're saying about uh, google and the facebook are they called growth uh, stocks but even right now actually they are pretty uh, uh, reasonably valued you know so uh, the valuation wise they're pretty good so compared to that say a tesla or a netflix is very highly valued we probably won't get into those stocks but i think google and facebook and uh, microsoft where we have a visibility where we like the business where we are familiar with the business it's within our circle of competence is something that we'll go out and buy it uh, and uh, and and it, again uh, they have to be valued at uh, it, they have to be at the right price so uh, that's kind of our strategy uh, uh is uh, not uh, exactly the benjamin graham kind of thing where you buy only statistically cheap companies but you see a lot of different parameters and then buy the company and growth is one of the parameters we look at too yeah so yeah. and also let me ask you a question uh, i think last uh, march or april when we met and we uh, we did a couple of talks so we started moving a lot of our clients into your flexi cap fund Yeah. so i personally invested and plus lot of we recommended lot of our clients to come into fund at that time. now these are sitting at 60 to 70% on the year now you know people understand that long term the returns are going to get averaged so you know what one thing i know that you have to sit sit in and tight but where do you feel the growth will come from here so you know uh, somebody asked this question that look i have money what's a good fund to invest in So guys, uh, Parag Parik Flexi Cap is an amazing fund to invest mm-hmm. in even today. Yeah. So, but and since they are Flexi Cap, they have the right to move from one side to another side to go. So, point is that what do you feel about the market today? Are we standing? Do you feel this market will go? You know, obviously, some people are talking about correction. Other people are saying mm. that this growth will continue. But we know mm. there there is so much growth that has happened in one year. eventually you know it has to slow down because at the end of the day you know otherwise it will become too expensive so hmm. so you know how should one be investing now yeah so uh, our take is that uh, surely like exactly like you said the one year returns have been great uh, uh, since march uh, last year that that's the time we said that uh, 
uh, it's time to be greedy uh, in March when valuations were rock bottom and uh, uh, that's the time to buy stocks when they are actually at the lowest. Uh, surely uh, this kind of growth is quite phenomenal uh, over the last one year. We are definitely cautious on the Indian markets uh, as of right now. Uh, we are not, I think it's a stock pickers market. I think you will find value, but you have to really look deep into it. It's not going to be uh, like last March that you could just buy a few stocks and they will all be good, you know. So uh, it's about uh, uh, really doing your work now, uh, really doing the research. Uh, and uh, again, if opportunities are not uh, uh, available or something is not really up to our liking, then um, we could also uh, uh, stick to cash to futures arbitrage and be a bit in cash going a bit forward. Uh, US markets actually look pretty fine to me, uh, to us. Uh, uh, the stocks that we have invested, the technology stocks uh, and stuff, they are growing phenomenally well. I think uh, 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 the, the, the pandemic has only accelerated their growth. So, uh, and they're available and some of them are available at pretty great valuations too. I mean, they're pretty reasonable. Obviously, there are some, uh, again, there are uh, pockets of value uh, everywhere, right? Pockets of value and pocket of over uh, uh, overvaluation. So that's the one thing uh, uh, we need to be careful that we don't buy into any technology stock because not all technology stocks are a Google or something like that. You know, there are uh, other stocks which are very expensive and uh, they've just gone up uh, 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 many fold uh, without any uh, 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 real fundamentals, you know. And we're seeing some of that actually uh, happening right now in Indian markets also. Uh, some of the uh, smaller cap stocks, uh, which really don't have too many fundamentals, are now just going uh, up one way. So that's kind of uh, a, uh, that. That's kind of a sign to I think be slightly cautious going forward. So uh, Neil, let me ask a quite different question. Although we don't talk about stocks, since we were talking about various uh, large caps and multi large cap, there's one stock a lot of people talk about. There have been a few questions here that about. Uh, IC that uh, uh, you know, a lot of ITC, 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 lot of people, ITC. Have, lot of people have a lot of expectations from that stock. So, what, yeah. what, what, what do you feel about that? Uh, so, uh, I think uh, obviously the stock price has not done much in the last few years, uh, but the business metrics are improving. I think uh, one thing when we look at uh, companies, it's like are we, uh, we are buying a business, not a stock that will go up, up or down tomorrow, you know. So. Uh, like uh, in a lot of the businesses that we've uh, invested in and uh, uh, one of the, uh, th there are a few examples where the stock really hasn't moved for a few years and then one fine year they kind of take over. As long as the underlying businesses are doing well, as long as the company is throwing out cash to the shareholder, uh, uh, I think uh, we are fine holding it. Uh, it's actually one of our highest uh, 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 weightages in the portfolio. And uh, 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 we are we are comfortable holding it. Uh, let's put it this way. Uh, and yeah, a stock performance uh, uh, sometimes doesn't happen for a long time. That's why I say long term investing. And if you stay for a long term, compounding will benefit you, and uh, things will get better. Uh, again, uh, we bought those at the right time. I I, I would believe uh, in the sense that when the uh, markets fell last March, we got them at pretty good valuations. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, we're sitting uh, and yeah, I, I get it. It's not moved as fast or has not moved at all. But uh, 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 we just bought it, uh, what, uh, not even a year back. So it's, our holding periods has only been a year. Uh, we keep telling our investors to be at least invested five plus years. So uh, I think we've got a long way to go for ITC in that way. Yeah, but even if you bought it last year, then it would have been at 170 or something. So it, it has gone up since that. It's it's gone up, yeah. Since the lows, it's gone up, but obviously it's hovering around uh, uh, a range uh, which has not uh, been broken. So uh, uh, yeah, but uh, I think uh, as long as the business is doing good, I think uh, if we have confidence in the management, uh, 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 we are fine holding it, and uh, we're very patient investors. So uh, we uh, we, uh, we basically buy and hold, and again, our churn ratio in the mutual fund is very less, so we don't churn the portfolio too much. Uh, and, and and yeah, I, I think uh, we are we are fine holding on. So and uh, let me uh, also ask you that uh, you know if you had uh, maybe like, a lot of people are asking if I have a lump sum today, how would I invest this? So if you have today, uh, Neil, uh, maybe one crore rupees, okay, yeah. and this is uh, you know uh, so you have to invest it today. How would you invest it, and where would you invest it? So I, uh, I actually wouldn't put uh, uh, one crore fully lump sum right now uh, in the market. I would, I would actually uh, 
uh, do an STP or something like that and divide it over the next six to 10 months. So uh, uh, put it into a liquid fund and do an STP for the next six to eight months. I don't think, uh, again, I think there's a lot of uncertainty going on right now. I mean, markets are saying one uh, are going one way, but we know that in the economy, there's a lot of uncertainty going on. And uh, uh, we have to wait and see how that goes. Again, like I said, uh, valuations are also a bit stretched, I feel right now, or uh, at least some of the pockets are a bit stretched right now. So I would be comfortable spreading out that money instead of uh, putting into lump sum uh, right now. And I would put into, uh, uh, yeah, I would put majority of my money in equities. Uh, again, I, it obviously depends on your age. It depends on your risk profile. It depends on a lot of, uh, lot of things. But if you have uh, at least 10, 15, 20 years of compounding left or 10, 20 years of investment left, then I would uh, put majority of that into the equities. Anything less than five years, don't put it into equities. That's kind of the rule we follow. Anything you require is within the next five years, don't put that that, that money right now in equities. Put it into uh, something safer in a debt uh, debt allocation or something like that. You know, that's what I'll do. I mean, so that's very well answered. So I'll answer for what what I'll do. So typically last year I took a route of doing an STP, but then it hurts you also. So I started my STP in. Uh, I think April or May, and I did it over six months. And by the end of the six months, the market had got gone so up, and I lost a lot of money. But and there's nothing wrong with that. And about a month back, I had actually done a little bit of a churn. I invested. Now the market is up ten percent. So you can never predict the market. Yeah. So guys, the whole thing is don't look at a lump sum. Look at the period you're going to be invested in. So if you are invested in five years. So, you know, if you unless you buy get in on the worst possible day, which is very unlikely, you know, you're going to so, so three to six month STP, I think, is a is a good idea where I would put my I'm putting my money, personal money. And we are recommending as Bajaj Capital to our clients is put it in high quality equity at the moment so that even if you're expecting a little bit of uh, correction, it's better to be in very large uh, blue chip funds or very high quality funds with very high quality equity. And that doesn't mean that a small cap, mid cap has to be bad quality. They are large mm -hmm. companies in a small cap also. They are large, com very high quality companies in a mid cap also. So you have to be in fund the very high quality portfolio. So this is the time because when the whole market has risen and there are some companies who have risen where the fundamentals not be as strong. This is a time you guys need to be careful and move. So please get your portfolio review done. Look, go into your portfolios, uh, and and make sure you're into funds with very high quality equity, uh, with high quality holdings, because that's that's important at this time. And then there was a question on what is should be my fund allocation at the age of fifty. Guys, see, look, you have more than five to ten years of invest horizon, ten years. So whether you're even seventy. You don't need all your money at 70. You'll still need your money at 75, 80. Because today longevity is going up. So even at 80 or 70, you should be investing in equities. Maybe you do more conservative blue chip and large large cap funds, but you should be investing. If you're at 50, you're still young. You have still got half half a you know, you are still another golden jubilee left, hopefully. So you can afford to take risk. Uh, and I would say that, uh, you know, the rule of the thumb old used to be that 50, if your age, uh, 100 minus your age should be your equity allocation. So on that basis, it's 50 percent, but uh, it can be higher also. And also you need to see, look, a lot of our debt is lying in EPF or PPF and things. Look at our debt. Look at our debt. To show, we should look at all assets which is our bank account, our employee provident fund, our uh, public provident fund and other areas. And then we should do our allocation. People end up making a mistake. Look, I'm putting 50% of my investments in equity, but that's only their investment. So if you look at they had 60% money is lying in EPF and others. So eventually they only have got a 20% uh, you know, uh, stake in equity and then they don't get enough return. And they just see, look, other people are doing better than me. So you have to look at that overall portfolio. So at fifty, at the age of fifty, I'll say fifty percent should be in equity. That's my call, but that's just uh, you know. And again, you have to see what is your risk profile, what is your ability to take a risk, and then I think 
Shukla has answered that question very well. If you need the money before five years, I say if you need the money before three years, then be in debt. So also, uh, Neil, let me ask a question. There are a lot of you have launched a new fund, which is the conservative hybrid fund. So tell us a little bit about that, what uh, purpose it serves. And as you have said that you come out with very few fund options, so you don't want to confuse the investors. So, well, you know, what do you feel uh, about this? Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'll just go a little back in history a little bit uh, to 2017-18. Uh, 2018, we launched our liquid fund, which was our second fund. So we launched a flexi cap uh, in 2013 and for five years we didn't. Liquid fund, we obviously launched because it helps in SIP, STP to park short term money. And that was the requirement uh, at that point. Uh, and we had openly said that we are going to uh, only uh, uh, invest in very high quality. I mean, we're not going to take any credit risk here. It's uh, it's not uh, for the returns. It's for actually managing liquidity and having a great credit quality on, the, on, on that front. But it was surprising to us at that point also that when we went out to people, uh, the uh, the fact that they were looking at liquid funds from a return perspective, you know, that, oh, uh, this fund is giving so much uh, return. You guys are only planning to give so much return, so I'm not going to invest. So uh, that was a little perplexing for us that uh, liquid fund is not for this purpose. If you want returns, go to equity or some other asset class. Uh, and uh, surely our liquid fund did not see uh, 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 much inflows at that point and not much interest at that point. We're like, okay, it's okay. We will, uh, again, like our equity fund, we will work hard for this and uh, hopefully uh, people uh, will turn their mind. Then ILFS crisis happened in uh, September 18, 2018. And uh, obviously, the, uh, you know what happened with the debt funds. Some of them started showing negative returns. Some of the liquid funds started showing negative returns. At that point, uh, a lot of people came to us and said that, okay, we now kind of understood uh, that debt is or liquid funds are meant for a very safe kind of investment. Is not there for... Uh, uh, gaining returns. It's for another purpose, which is uh, uh, liquidity uh, management and having safe money with you. Uh, this mindset was very important for us that this changed the mindset in 2018-19. At the same time, a lot of our investors and a lot of uh, advisors came up to us and said that, listen, you have a liquid fund, you got a tax saver now, you got a equity fund. Uh, it will be great if you guys have a kind of a debt fund also, so we can uh, really, we kind of trust you guys and we would like to have things uh, in uh, in this uh, manner with you guys. Uh, and we thought that, okay, I think now is the right time to uh, uh, start a debt fund. Uh, again, what's kind of, uh, how did we come with the conservative hybrid? I mean, it's a conservative hybrid, but for all purposes, it's a debt fund from our uh, fund house. Uh, the one thing is that we wanted it to have as much flexibility like our equity fund has. The equity fund can invest wherever the opportunities are there. In the debt fund, we wanted to go wherever opportunities are there. We didn't want to be uh, categorized as long term, short term, or uh, 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 banking and PSU and uh, whichever boxes they have. So in a conservative hybrid fund, the debt allocation has to be minimum 75%. And that we can uh, uh, invest wherever we find opportunities. One thing we won't do is we will not take too much credit risk in this, uh, uh, in the debt part of it. So it'll be all AAA, uh, that, at the minimum, a AAA and high rated AAA uh, 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 and uh, uh, state and uh, sovereign bonds. Uh, we have uh, about 15% uh, uh, that we can invest in equities. And this equity would also be, uh, we'll uh, want to uh, give debt like returns. Like if there's someone, companies doing a buyback or cash to futures arbitrage is looking attractive or a high dividend yield stocks. That's kind of what we are going to do here. So it will give. Or uh, very fixed income like uh, securities, and the rest of the ten percent we can uh, uh, invest in uh, real estate investment trust or uh, uh, infrastructure investment trust. So that's kind of the model uh, here, uh, where uh, we don't want. But in, in debt, what happens if you want to get more returns? You have to go down the credit quality, and that's one thing we don't want to do. We don't want to go down the credit quality. We want the qual credit quality to be absolutely really good. And the rest of the 15-20% will probably hopefully act like a kicker to give a slightly uh, competitive uh, uh, return to the investor. So uh, so what is the kind of indicative return that you're trying to own in this, uh, this thing? Because uh, you know, the return is a game of risk and return. So what is the kind of risk you intend to take and what is the kind of return that you're looking at delivering? Uh, so, uh, again, uh, it's not, uh, again, one thing is that it will be a credi credible alternative to, uh, say, 
uh, FDs. And uh, what we are trying to do is that uh, uh, right now, small saving scheme uh, returns are kind of uh, between six and seven percent, and those are kind of sometimes the best uh, uh, best things going around for a lot of people. You know, you don't probably don't even need. Uh, debt mutual funds. If you have uh, certain of these government schemes to invest in, they are probably giving you uh, good returns, and you don't need to look elsewhere. So I think uh, uh, competition is with those kind of uh, that kind of a return that we are uh, looking at. You know, uh, and uh, for uh, at least for the higher tax bracket people, because uh, they will get the indexation benefits. You know, so uh, maybe people in the lower tax bracket might not uh, uh, might be, be better suited to just go with the government scheme because. Uh, uh, those kind of are the best uh, returns going, and those are very safe, and uh, it's backed by the government. So, but for the little bit on the higher side of the uh, uh, tax bracket, we think that this could uh, uh, really help them out with their uh, debt allocation by giving them competitive returns. So, so just for me to understand it, this conservative hybrid is going to have fifteen percent in equity, then uh, yeah. it is going to have another 10, 15, 20 percent in REITs and in products. Zero like to ten percent. Zero to ten percent in REITs, ten to twenty, uh, ten to twenty-five percent in uh, equity, and uh, minimum seventy-five percent in uh, debt. And debt is going to be uh, what? Uh, how much is it going to be the credit risk type of debt, and how much is it going to be government liquid or your? Uh, you know, hard yeah, case so type. I don't think there's not going to be too much credit risk. Like I said, uh, it's all going to be uh, uh, pretty secured. Uh, uh, a safe uh, 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 of sovereign and state and very high AAA uh, rated uh, government securities. I mean, uh, AAA uh, corporate securities. Okay. And then the question by Vedant Krishnan on he's asking that SIP investments are they worthy enough? So, what also happened in SIP is that a lot of people have been doing SIPs, but they have not seen great returns. Hmm. The way the markets behave. Years ago, so what do you uh, um, say about that, Neil? Uh, how would you answer this question? Uh, being my area, I'll also jump in. Yeah, I think uh, you're probably better to answer this question, but I'll I'll take a uh, I'll take a poke at it uh, before you can answer it. Uh, uh, so I think uh, SIPs is a very good way to maintain uh, composure while investing uh, by keeping your behavior in check. Because uh, as the uh, uh, if you get uh, if the NEV goes down, you get more uh, uh, units of the uh, mutual fund, and as the uh, if it goes up, you get less units. So you kind of average that whole thing out. So I think more than anything, it's for your own well-being that you that you don't feel like oh I uh, say if you do a lump sum investment, if you do it at a top and uh, the market goes down, you would not feel too sad. So I think uh, over a longer term, I think both uh, lump sum and SIP over a very long term kind of come together, you know. But it's I think. It's about just maintaining the uh, discipline, the investment discipline of uh, uh, investing every month and keeping your investments going. You know, so you don't really uh, spend too much of it, and uh, uh, there's a discipline towards it. You know, so I think it's a great way to maintain discipline for a lot of people. Uh, returns could uh, be either way. Sometimes the SIP returns are better than the lump sum returns, also. So. Uh, yeah, uh, I think Sanjeev, sir, so you I, can. Uh, I, yeah, it's on. Also, on, always on the trend of the market. So, in sales, you need to invest. SIP will only show its return and power beyond ten years. So, please understand, SIP is an investment for minimum ten years and beyond, where you'll see the power. And what you need to do is you need to review your SIPs. Review your SIPs doesn't mean that you need to move to B. You need to see is I've invested is performing and is this fund going to class in the next two, three years or not? So, you know, don't look at your SIPs every year. One is if you decide on 20,000 rupees or whatever, to that 20,000 rupees, keep increasing it. Look at the returns after you have been in the market for years to 15 years. Second is that look, keep looking at the quality of funds that you are invested in along with your investment advisor so that uh, you look at funds so ensuring that you are in the right category of funds the right quality of funds that is also very important which will determine so two three years you can review your portfolio and you should be reviewing your portfolio and it's a fantastic instrument yes but if you're looking at three to five years you know if somebody had done a lump sum you'll see the sip may look at underperforming especially the kind of market where we have it has been very range bound and uh, you know even when the correction happened it happened only for two months 
so you know maybe a one or two sips got a good uh, valuation or pricing but if this was a one year correction or a two year today sips would have been doing amazingly well so point is that it so depends on the opportunity in this thing but it's it's a good uh, investment uh so then uh, next uh, parag there's a uh, neel there's a question by uh, dr vv kantika is what are the good choices for a stp lump sum in a liquid fund for a period of 3 to 5 years should the stp completed in 6 to 12 months or say maybe over 3 to 5 years so what he is asking is that he probably wants to do an stp uh so he saying what it should i look at uh, you know should i be looking at doing the stp over 6 to 12 months for a 3 to 5 year stay uh i think uh, uh, there's no right answer to this uh, i would think i think it uh, depends on what are your goals going forward uh, 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 what is uh, uh, what is your risk taking ability you know uh, if you are really conservative and you want to really spread it out then 3 to 5 years is fine but if you are fine uh, to invest uh, uh, the chunk in the next 6 to 12 months and uh, let that uh, compound over the next 7 to 10 years then uh, a, a shorter time frame is fine but if you are uh, risk averse or you really want to spread the investment out and uh, 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 probably average it out the best way possible then a longer time frame is better i think it all depend on uh, your risk taking ability and what is your uh, goals and what is your tenure of investment going forward and again sanjeev sir i think this is uh, something that you could also jump in and uh, answer yeah, i think so you're probably better if you are more conservative then i'll say months and uh, if you are more aggressive is six months but today's market i think 12 months is so good and a five year stay is good enough yeah. so i think that's a very very good investment strategy if to get into the market it's a good way for uh, for you to do it and uh, you know i think uh, that's uh, that's perfect uh, you know it's a, it's a very good strategy and mank is asking a question that i'm doing access blue chip suggest me a fund so we are talking about parag parik mank that's a great fund you should look at you know adding to your portfolio <laughs> so <laughs> yes okay so then there's a interesting technical question by this gentleman called mr so he is saying that uh, at current level does it make sense to book profits and move it to uh, defer debt and then put it bank once the correction happens and re enter at lows this is you know so point is that i will answer this question quickly and then i will let you answer it neel see guys you can never time the market madhu you know if anybody could time the market then he would be like another warren buffet and even warren buffet would be looking to him so point is that it's impossible to time market uh, you know people have been trying to do that with us market for the last 10 years you know i know people who have been holding on to cash and saying that us market it's very high let me get in at the right price let me get in at the right price and the market you know the corrections have been far and few between and always the valuations have kept on going up and their people have not been able to get in so point is that uh, it's very difficult what i would say is that let people like uh, neel take these calls on your behalf when you are in a flexi cap uh, type of a fund they can move to equity and they are into uh, cash and there are dynamic asset allocations available who can do that so you can uh, take you know you can move between maybe a value growth Uh, you know uh, taper with that along with a good uh, financial advisor or if you are an advisor yourself basis but you have to be careful with that you know for most of us if you are in the market for 10 years 15 years then these don't matter will make a little bit of a difference and uh, then there are a lot of people who do directly and i say that even if you pay 1% extra to an advisor ठीक है मेक दैट एडवाइजर वर्क फॉर दैट वन परसेंट अगर आप दस लाख रुपए भी कर रहे हो तो आप उसमें कितना बचा रहे हो दैट वन लाख इज अ वन लाख रुपीज इज एट थाउजेंड रुपीज अ मंथ यू कैंट इवन हायर एन असिस्टेंट फॉर दैट इफ द बट यू हैव टू सी के इफ आई एम पेइंग दैट यू नो मनी टू माई एडवाइजर ठीक है विच इज सॉरी टेन थाउजेंड रुपीज यू नो एम आई गेटिंग वैल्यू फॉर दैट टेन थाउजेंड रुपीज और नॉट so and and if he is giving you value please pay that money and have a person you can bounce off your thoughts and ideas 
Now, handing over to you, Neil, uh, how would you answer this question that, uh, you know, what should a person do? You're 100% right. I mean, uh, it's futile to time the markets. I think people have tried it and we don't have to go too far back. We just have to go last year. Last March, uh, I think uh, we all would know people uh, who said that, oh, I will I will invest when the market falls further, when the market falls further. And we've seen all these kind of investors who try to time the market just a year back. And nobody could predict it. Nobody could predict that uh, uh, at this time, we would be at the highest in the market, you know, when the Corona cases and the COVID cases are the highest, you know. So uh, I don't think one, even one person has ever predicted, got this right, that the market's going to fall so much and then going to rise so much also. Uh, so people who have, uh, are not in the market have actually lost out. They lost out. So better is to stick to the market, stay in the market. Write the volatility, you know, the it's, the market is not going to give you linear returns. That's for sure. It's a roller coaster. So enjoy the ride, even if it goes up and down. But over a longer term, I think you will get there, you know. So the main thing is staying in the market and staying it for a long term. I can't uh, keep saying this enough that at least 7 to 10 years, if you can stay in the market, that's great. I think people have, 99.9% um, .9 of people have made money over 7 to 10 years if they've invested uh uh, in the correct stocks and the correct mutual funds and uh, did not done too much stupid things at that point, you know. So I think that's kind of where it should be. Okay. So, and uh, there's a question by Maloof, uh, investor, uh, value investor, you know, he's put his name as that. So he's asking that uh, what is ideal number of funds that you should be invested in? Would you say one or two mutual funds or spread it across five, six, across various asset classes? I think uh, number one, uh, uh, one of the th mistakes I think I've seen a lot of new people doing it or uh, maybe a lot of people is that they don't come with a plan. They, they don't have a financial plan. They don't have a goals uh, uh, go, uh, of why they're investing. They will invest because their friend has told them or they would see it on social media or they would see last one year performance of a fund and they would invest there. I think one is to make a plan. I think a one, two or four, five, six is immaterial. It depends on what your plan is because each one will have a uh, will will have our own unique plan or our own unique goals and uh, unique risk profiles, you know. Uh, so uh, obviously not having too many funds which are doing the same thing. So if two or three funds can do a majority of your diversification, that's great. You don't need more than those two, three funds. But it will all depend on how when you sit down and you actually figure out uh, what do you want? What are your short term goals, medium term goals, long term goals? And then you invest for that. I think then people will get a better understanding of what they need to invest. And uh, I, I am definitely not a proponent of having multiple schemes or having too many schemes in the portfolio. I think uh, three, four sch uh, schemes, in my view, can do most of the work. You know, four schemes can actually do most of the work. So uh, uh, don't get into too many. I think that's one of the other things I've seen recently. Uh, also, because uh, a lot of fintech apps are there and they nudge people to keep uh, doing something or the other. They keep flashing something to them and they just keep buying funds because of that and that behavior is not good you get sub sub optimum return so it's better to make a good plan with a good financial advisor and then if you want to transact then transact on these platforms so uh, but don't take financial advice from them that's my uh, uh, my point yeah and and my point is that look uh, there's a there's a topic called behavior finance there's a lot of books written on it so also look at uh, read uh, some of those books a lot of people, the reason you need a financial advisor is that he needs to stop you from panicking in the worst situation. He can, and he needs to stop you from being greedy at a great time like today, where you have got 70% return. So point is that, look, uh, most of the people don't end up making money because they don't follow the behavior funds approach. So you need a good advisor. As Neil said, you need a, to have a proper plan. You need to have a financial plan. You need to understand your goals, your priorities, how much you need to invest. And then you need to also understand, okay, look, uh, on that basis, what should be my asset allocation? Small cap, mid cap, large cap. And then you decide on your fund on that basis. So, you know, I'm going forward on this, uh, there's a gentleman called Mr. Kaltia asking this question that I want to sip for 20 years. Should I go for a multi cap or a large cap for 20 years? So, Neil, how would you answer that? Uh, there, there's a saying, never ask a barber if you need a haircut. He'll always say yes. So, uh, I don't run a large cap. I run a flexi cap. So, I would say flexi cap. 
I, I do believe in that. I think a diversified strategy uh, really works because uh, I think the fund manager can move across wherever the opportunities are, you know. Uh, so, uh, uh, and, and I really think there's uh, 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 returns to be made also uh, uh, in, in some of the uh, uh, smaller companies, obviously. And uh, uh, if we can invest in one fund where you can uh, invest in uh, different market caps and wherever the, uh, invest, uh, wherever the uh, 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 opportunities are. So I would just give you an example. Like, let me go back to 2017, where we thought the mid cap and small cap piece had run up a lot, and we didn't. Want, we were not that much into that space because we had to. We sold off uh, a lot of those stocks, you know, and we had cash at that point, which we could deploy again uh, whenever the market corrected and stuff like that. So I think a diversified strategy, uh, uh, to my mind, uh, helps. But I am a biased. I am biased on this, so I want to put that on record. Uh, Sanjeev ji, I think uh, you could answer that in a non-biased way. And, so I, I'll say rather than a mid-cap or a large-cap, go for a multi-cap. And also understand that there are good companies available across. So there are very high-quality companies which are in mid-cap. They are very high-quality in small-cap. Also because that industry is smaller. Okay, so please don't buy this just a definition. But when you have a very long term, this thing, you need to have an asset allocation and flexi cap is a good way of doing it. Or at the end of the day, divide your money between a mid cap, large cap and a flexi cap and and, uh, and let that money go so on. And we don't have too much time now. So Dhananjay, you have asked a question on uh, which is a good insurance for your father, 75 and 65. Let me just say, okay, look, uh, guy, guys, there is no best insurance. Now, that's a take people make. They hear a person talking about a plan. They want to buy it. In health insurance, every plan is different for every person. There are hundreds of permutation combinations. And that's why we have made this AI-based software, which will help recommend a plan. I'll give an example. Other day, I recommended my niece. Okay, give her a plan. And I know few plans which are good at my age. So when I look at the recommendation, I didn't understand those plans. And I just asked her, why have you recommended her this plan? Why haven't you given her what you gave me? And, you know, I understood that the plan I have at my age doesn't have maternity, doesn't have a lot of, you know, checkup for females and other things. Whereas she is a young girl, the plan they have recommended to her and her need was to have a plan to cover her maternity and a lot of other, uh, you know, if she had a baby, it would cover the baby if something happened to that. So, you know, point is that guys, different age, different people have a different need. So go through this process of advisory. And as I said, you can write an email to care at bajajcapital.com for this period during the pandemic to help people. We are giving it absolutely free. So please take it and take advantage of that. And just one last question you can pick up. And please, if you have any question, do ask. And we will make sure that somebody or other answers every question that you have. Because I, I want this time that you have spent here to add value to your life. So if you have any question when you watch the talk or you right now watching, please ask this question and we'll make sure it is answered. So my last question is, uh, there's a gentleman who has asked a question on thematic fund, which is Tata Digital India Fund. So what do you feel about thematic funds, uh, Neil? And just let's take one last uh, uh, question and then... Uh, also, then uh, there are uh, one question on index tracking funds. So, which is something, you know, I feel a lot of people are making that, uh, you know, thinking about so just these are the two questions that I can ask. Uh, yeah, from our side, like I said, uh, we believe in uh, having a more diversified strategy where we can take opportunities uh, wherever there are there. So, if there's a theme playing out for some, or if there's a sector that's doing well, we can anyway buy those uh, the same theme of the sector in a diversified strategy. So I am not very uh, it's I'm, I'm not very fond of uh, uh, sectoral or thematic fund. I think if somebody is really really uh, 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 clued into these sectors or these themes and they really believe in, they can probably put a small percentage of their money in it. Those uh, but for majority of the people, I don't think they should. Uh, put it into any sectoral or thematic uh, fund if they don't really uh, uh, just, just to ride the wave of because of fads and fancies because these funds are, uh, usually come when uh, things have already shot up and have already gone up so you'll buy them a bit expensive that's my personal view I think uh, most of these things are a diversified strategy 
would be able to take advantage of so uh, might not be needed so i i fully agree with neil I think he's answered it most of the themes get launched the theme is all over so the thing has already happened so is uh, you attic only if you have very large money and you have the financial capabilities and you can take very strategic course on that so if you are a family office or something then mac funds are actually meant for people like that they are not for retail investors so just be careful when you go about it and finally neil about this index tracking funds and just uh, that's the final coin we'll be taking today what do you feel about these index tracking funds uh so the index fund or, or the, the smart beta kind of strategies uh, sorry uh, which uh, so uh index tracking funds let let so we i think he's talking about index funds only not smart beta index funds uh i mean uh it's 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 a safe uh, way to invest obviously uh, uh, they are low cost uh, and uh, if you just want to track the index without uh, uh, being too disheartened in the sense that uh, 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 you will not probably overperform the index or not underperform the index you'll go with the index so it could be a good strategy uh, for uh, uh, somebody with a, a not too much risk of first time investors is not a bad strategy so Uh, I have no I have no problem. If people want to invest in uh, index funds and tracking a good index. That is, uh, uh, th- those those have done pretty okay. Yeah, my my whole question. Um, yeah, my so larger. So you're going. You're going in for an S N five hundred fund or a. uh you know nasdaq and then it's good to go for an index fund but when you're a market which you can understand like india then i think it's better to have a focus on which will try to beat that index rather than just uh, manage that index and uh, you know you know debates between active and passive you know so i am i am a more of a active believer there may be some people who out there who are more of a passive believer and in yeah. india active funds have been able to eat because yeah. uh, you know india love um, investing and so i think it kind of and the thing behind it is much better so neil some yeah. final words sorry sorry uh, sir 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 yeah you got cut there i couldn't hear you i'm just saying some final words from you for everyone today and then uh, we say bye okay. everyone Okay uh thank you Sanjeev sir and thank you to the whole team of Bajaj Capital and thank you for all of you all uh who've come and listened to me uh uh I think uh, uh one thing is that uh, I think when the markets are uh, uh going high and I think uh experience tells that uh, you know at this point you should not get into too many of the fads and fancies and tips and uh, uh for just uh, buy stuff because you've seen it on social media I think it's very important right now actually uh to take stock of things you know even if things are going up and it's very exciting sometimes uh, inaction is the best action uh uh so i would just request you all to uh, take a look at your portfolio don't do anything uh, which is not wanted to do because uh, i know right now the uh, uh, the urge to do something or to buy a stock or do direct investing or something is uh, very high uh do it only if you are fully committed to this and if you can give your time energy and you have the proper tools to do it yourself please go ahead do it otherwise uh, please take a help of a coach everyone needs a coach and uh, uh, I, and i hope and uh, wish you all, all uh, a very happy investing journey going forward and hope you all all make a lot of money going forward so uh, thank you sanjeev sir uh, it was a pleasure being here Yeah thank you Neil thank you great having you and thank everyone for making it today thank you